I have hinted at the secrets of the inner skies. Turn your eyes inward. Tune your ears inside. Rise up if you want to hear the call of the saints, says Swamiji of Agra. Reaching for the Sun is a collection of poems that describe a practice and a path to oneness with the Divine. The work of Swami Shivdayal Singh of Agra, 1818-1878, is known for boldness, clarity, and spiritual understanding, and has rightfully become a classic in contemporary mysticism. Today on Spiritual Awakening Radio, a Sant Mot Satsang podcast format, featuring some fair use selections from this wonderful book, which I'm reviewing today, called Reaching for the Sun, Spiritual Poems by Swamiji of Agra, very nicely translated into contemporary English by Anthea Guinness part of a series of volumes featuring selections from the Sarbachan Radhaswami prose and poetry of Shivdayal Singh, also known as Swamiji Maharaj, also known as Sant Radhaswami Sahib, the great saint of Agra. Volume 1, Book 1, is A Path of Love, Talks with Swamiji of Agra. Book two is Becoming a Disciple, Talks with Swamiji of Agra. Book three, Hidden Treasure, Spiritual Poems by Swamiji of Agra. And the focus of today's podcast, Book four, Reaching for the Sun, Spiritual Poems by Swamiji of Agra. The Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry is out of this world, some of the most amazing mystic poetry, otherworldly poetry you will encounter. It's very much in the tradition of Rumi, in the tradition of the lover and the beloved, a bhakti kind of path, but Swamiji is more forthcoming in the revelation of the secrets of spiritual practice, the esoteric realities of the heavens and is presenting a more esoteric poetry with more technical terms, mystical terms. During the readings today, I will supply some definitions along the way of some of the terms used in these poems by Swamiji. Rise up, go home to Satlok, the true eternal spiritual region. Listen, Surat. Listen, O soul. Let me tell you one thing. Go search for a real saint. Devote yourself to selfless service. Devote yourself to seva of a true master. Serve him in all ways. Attend his satsang regularly. Listen to what he teaches and Make a place for it in your heart and mind. In the three worlds live the slaves of illusion, the slaves of Maya, driven on by the creator, sustainer, and the destroyer. In the three worlds, whether inside or outside, Kal's presence is obvious everywhere the presence of the Lord of time and death is obvious everywhere, says Swamiji Maharaj, inside and outside. Swamiji Maharaj, without a true master and true nam, the inner light and sound, no soul can escape. Rise up, go home to Sat Lok, go far beyond the boundaries of Kal's domain, says Swamiji Maharaj. Very much in the spirit of the Gnostic Gospels, which speak of 
rising above, to escape the rule of the demiurge, the lawgiver. Swamiji, too, speaks of rising beyond the realms of karma and illusion, to be free from the rules and regulations of lower realms of creation. Without a true master and true nam, no soul can escape. There is a poem in the Sarbachan that says, Meditate on the Shabbat, on the sound. By no other means will it come round. Only the sound can tame the serpent mind, bringing it into a level of tranquility, bringing it into a, a degree of stillness and tranquility that it otherwise cannot find in this world, in their state of consciousness. The seeker, the true spiritual seeker's state of consciousness can never become still enough, can never, the mind can never become still enough by any other means. Only the sound makes it possible to truly transcend body and mind and rise above. Like the recorder being played by the musician, mesmerizing the snake, the serpent. The inner sound is the only thing that will tame the serpent mind. By no other means will it come round. Bathing the mind. Sit inside your body see the door of the eye the path to the inner worlds begins here allow your love for the master's feet to grow this is the first rung of the ladder the second rung surat shabad merging consciousness in sound bathing the mind inside Be gentle at heart, compassionate, kind in your mind, if you are searching for spirituality. Stop indulging in lust and abandon this plane of desire. Keep on putting surat to shabad. Keep on putting the attention faculty of the soul, the soul's ability to spiritually see and hear, putting surat to shabd or shabad, the divine power, the light and the sound. Surat shabad yoga is about seeing the unseen God by contemplating his light and the heavenly sound, which can be seen, which can be heard. And therefore the soul can navigate. Therefore the soul can merge into God, experience divinization or theosis, becoming one with God. By becoming one with the light and becoming one with the divine sound. Says Swamiji, the most precious thing, you'll get everything, the essence from the master. Grow in love for the lotus feet every day and be gentle at heart, compassionate, kind in your mind. Take hold of the current inside and join surat to it. Merge yourself completely in that satsang. There are three levels of satsang. The word satsang is a term for spiritual association. People get together in a satsang meetup. A satsang is a spiritual gathering in the name of a living master, typically associated with a lineage of masters. And only truth is discussed there. Truth is the only focus. 
The wisdom of the masters is the only kind of wisdom being offered there. Another level of satsang is the study of the writings, the teachings of the masters. And the ultimate level of satsang is true association with the Supreme Being in the inner realms. An inner satsang, an inner association. Says Swamiji, take hold of the current inside and join surat to it. The attention faculty of the soul is joined to it, is joined to the sound current. Merge yourself completely in that satsang, says Swamiji. When the surat soul rises, she peeps through the door inside and sees the oval of the three worlds. Going beyond, surat merges in Brahmanand, and the lotus blooms on the lake in soon the dark void. Be gentle at heart, compassionate, kind in your mind. Surat plunges into the lake of nectar and bathes there, is baptized there, all calls, tricks defeated. She sees her own true form and goes on, leaving behind the alien world. Purified, she flies upwards. She has vacated her old palace and is climbing higher and higher through the skies from sound to sound. She has realized the secret of the sounds, the shabds. Only the saints, nobody else, understands the mysteries she sees further on. You can't describe it in words. It comes out mixed up if you try. Be gentle at heart, compassionate, kind in your mind. Intellectuals analyze and use their wits, but how can you understand or explain unless you have done the practice? The exalted state of the saints is known only to the saints. How would anyone else realize it? Give up analyzing and cleverness. Have faith in what the, th the saints say. Have faith in what the saints say. Saints say what they have seen for themselves. Why do you go on listening and then argue with them using intellect? Radhaswami, the Lord of the soul, tells each and every one, only an initiate of the mysteries will understand the secret of the saints. Be gentle at heart, compassionate, kind in your mind if you are searching for spirituality. Says Swamiji Maharaj, Come to the Master's shelter, beloved. Keep his feet inside your heart. Radhaswami is telling you, Accept what I say, earthbound soul. Act on it today. Burn all your karmas. Burn all your karmas, says Swamiji Maharaj. And that reminds me of something I recently posted in social media from the living teachings of Baba Ram Singh. When people do their meditation and do their simran, the repetition of sacred names of God, when people do their meditation and do their simran regularly, then there is a lot of transformation that comes about within. 
bhajan or hearing the sound and simran he mentions here bhajan simran has a lot of strength and by doing simran we are able to cut off our karmas it is these karmas that were otherwise to be impediments on our path of devotion but because of the simran that we do and the meditation that we do we cut off or we redeem these deeds or these karmas these actions and we are able to get more devoted on the path and get successful on the path if we do not do the meditation then these karmas become impediments to us and they do not allow us to do our devotion and therefore we are not successful on the path from the spiritual satsang discourses of baba ram singh Reaching for the Sun, Spiritual Poems by Swami G. of Agra, translated by Anthea Guinness. Let go of all this timidity. Forget it, all this love, fear, and shame you feel with regard to the world. Just do your meditation, my dear. Class, color, status, let go of all these fears and concerns. Do your meditation, my dear. Force it back. Your fear of friends and enemies. Do your meditation, my dear. Parents, shake yourself free from fear of them. Do your meditation, my dear. Why be afraid? Throw it out, this fear. Frightened of friends and acquaintances? Don't be. Do your meditation, my dear. Drop whatever fears you have concerning any of your relatives. Do your meditation, my dear. Take up the practice of devotion and let go of all this timidity. Do your meditation, my dear. Why be afraid of those who know nothing of the mysteries? Do your meditation, my dear. Don't put your mind to any of this fear. Do your meditation, my dear. One garb sees another and feels afraid. They're both weak. So do your meditation, my dear. Totally fearless, afraid of no one. Until then you are weak. Do your meditation, my dear ridicule or respect whatever happens take it as his will and do your meditation my dear fix the strength of the master in your heart do your meditation my dear none of them can harm you why feel frightened do your meditation my dear nothing happens unless the master wishes it so do your meditation my dear you are weak and you're indulging in weakness. What else can I say? Do your meditation, my dear. Do the practice day by day. You'll become strong. No other way. Meditation, my dear. From weak to strong. One day you'll do it. Stop being insincere. Do your meditation, my dear. Insincere devotion is useless. But good or bad, true or false, do your meditation, my dear. Radha Swami, the Lord of the Soul, encourages you, my dear, to do your meditation whatever way you can. Isn't that wonderful? Not that we have to be antisocial and renounce our relatives, but we have to 
We have to be true to ourselves and make our own conscious choices and not simply let society at a young age download into our brains the dietary choices of others, the values of others, the consciousness of others, and just live an unexamined life where we've downloaded cultural values and religious assumptions without clicking yes at any step. Unexamined downloading into our minds the cultural baggage and programming of the ages. Tsunami after tsunami of other people's thoughts. Thought waves washing us away making us trapped somewhere in time, not even questioning any of it, not pondering anything, not choosing, just simply being washed away by the collective thought of others, having these choices downloaded into our minds, and fearing to be different from the masses, to have some anxiety, some fear about following the mystic path, being true to ourselves, quite literally. Breaking away from the pack. Quite often I notice that those who adopt a vegan diet are very bold. And it's very much like adopting a spiritual path. You know, you're, you're really leaving Mystery Babylon behind when you change your diet to a non-violent kind of diet. And same with the mystic path. It's a path for the brave, for the spiritual warrior, willing to do that, to value spiritual pursuits, even if you're not going to be socially rewarded for it. You're breaking away from your family religion or whatever. And you're just willing to do that in the name of truth. And you're just going to do that come what may. The spiritual path is for the brave of heart, the spiritual warrior. Those who dare, that never give up, that not only seek, but seek as well as find, and just continue pursuing the path for life. It's a lifelong pursuit and beyond. The true master reveals the word, Beloved, thanks be, thanks be, thanks be, thanks be for Shabbat. I have hinted at the secrets of the inner skies. Turn your eyes inward. Tune your ears inside. Rise up if you want to hear the call of the saints, says Swami G. Sea of happiness, it has spread everywhere inside me, full of bliss. I have come prepared to worship, mind merged in my master's feet. I look into his face, gazing as I sing the song of his praise and his darshan or vision. Supremely beautiful, radiance enters my eyes. The sun of love has risen in the mystic sky of Gagan, throwing out darkness, illusion, all that confusion with the dawn. My good fortune has woken up. I have found the unending sound. I have bathed in the waters of Sukman, turned the eye inward to the thousand petals. I have left mind and run away with Surat. I have seen Jot and Naringen, so much happiness. I can't put it into words. I have heard the sound of bell and conch, seen sun, moon, and stars inside. 
the door to the crooked tunnel opened and I went up through Trikuti and merged in my master's Shabad. Trikuti, the land of the sun, where you understand the Vedas or scriptures and know fully the half-syllable of Om. The sound of Rarang has woken me up, pulling me to the heights of the dark void of Sun and putting Maya and Kal to sleep. The white moon blossoms like a flower at the lake of nectar where soul drinks nectar. I become friends with the swan souls there, the ringing of the strings intensely loud. I experience the hidden sounds of the great void, Mahasun, and great Kal's power is reduced to nothing. Nectar showers down in Banwar Gufa, the vortex, the whirlpool cave, where I am that, and the flute are the sounds you hear. Soul rises further and hears the immense voice of Sat Purush. She enters Sach Khand and takes her seat on the throne. By the Lord's grace, he gives me a telescope, and I see the brilliance of the Lord of Alak. Then again, Lord, feeds me drops of nectar and tells me the secret of Radhaswami. That is the homeland of devotees. It is where I stay, says Swamiji. Reaching for the Sun, Spiritual Poems of Swamiji of Agra Book 4 of the Sarbachan series, translated by Anthea Guinness. Reaching for the Sun, Spiritual Poems by Swamiji Maharaj. By the way, she also has a book of Kabir poetry called Wake Up If You Can, Sayings of Kabir with Reflections and Mystic Stories, also by Anthea Guinness. My name is James Bean. You've been listening to a Sant Mat Satsang podcast, a Sant Mat Satsang podcast or format of Spiritual Awakening Radio. Today, exploring the teachings of Swamiji Maharaj with a couple of quotes from Baba Ram Singh along the way. I highly recommend the glossary of the Radhaswami faith if you hope to study the Sarbachan of Swamiji. There are several translations of it that are available these days. I highly recommend the glossary of the Radhaswami faith. I could do a hundred podcasts just using that book because the path of the masters has its own spiritual language. All of these terms are really quite amazing. Sach Khan, Sat Lok, Sat Parush, Mahasun, Sun, Banwar Gufa, all of these terms. It's helpful to have a glossary, a dictionary to look those terms up as you're studying the Sarvachan, because you'll encounter all of these terms quite routinely in the Sarvachan and other Radhaswami books, a great spiritual classics such as Radhaswami Mat Prakash, Prem Bani Radhaswami, Prem Patra Radhaswami, and so on. Good to have the glossary 
Go to my website, spiritualawakeningradio.com. There's a series of buttons on the right-hand side. And the very last one on the right-hand side is an orange e-library button. Click that and go to the Radhaswami section of my e-library. And near the top of that, a few links in, you'll see a link to the Glossary of the Radhaswami Faith, where you'll be able to look at that, download it, if you like. And if you can't navigate that, just send me an email. I'll be happy to send a link to you, a link to the Glossary of the Radhaswami Faith. My email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. This program, of course, is at the Santmat Radhaswami channel at YouTube and is in the podcast world. Just Google Spiritual Awakening Radio James Bean at Google or Bing, or if there are any other search engines still around, uh, one of those. And you'll come to the website. You'll come to see my online social media as well as links to many podcast apps and venues, our websites, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Audible, and so on. And actually, you can just go to my website and you'll find links to all of this uh, material, online resource resources for uh, this program, resources for spiritual seekers and listeners of this podcast. My website has been revamped, upgraded, and has recently gone live with a new look, a new format. The website is spiritualawakeningradio.com. If you go there, you'll see widgets that automatically update You know the podcast feed from Libsyn, as well as the YouTube channel. And on the front page of my website is actually a, a, a Twitter widget that goes to one of my Twitter accounts, and that automatically updates as well. There's a donate button. There are many different buttons at the website that go to various podcast sites, Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, and so on, social media, various blog sites, Substack, Medium, Blogspot, WordPress, and so on. All that is at the website, spiritualawakeningradio.com. Thanks for joining me today. Tune in again for another edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio.